high on KB. Unnerving. The art of losing your nerves when something or someone removes your stilts. Video games. The art of losing your shit when the controller and lag gives you a hard time. You. The art of experiencing these two aspects in the most unfortunate scenarios. I mean, I had to uncap the frame rates per second on The Evil Within recently because of this, before they finally updated the game. So this Halloween I intend... post Halloween. Yeah, record this afterwards. I intend on focusing on what rattles the person in the driving seat, puts them on edge. And while we've desensitized ourselves to a lot of the horror icons that we've gotten to know and love, we need to do something a bit different, I think, and just throw in some video game sounds, which either take the form of an alert or just making you say, there's no point anymore, we may as well just get on the ground and void our bowels before and after we die. Now I say unnerving because too many people have used scariest as an adjective, and saying those which make you say, that emoticon, is a bit excessive to put in a title. And then if I just include a pumpkin, then unnerving will fit within this excessive holiday. So none of this isn't scary, you know, emphasis on the scary, because we're looking at all of it. We're looking at panicky, tense, and a feeling of not wanting to play the game anymore when we're looking at these sounds. What I'm looking for is actual physical sounds and sound effects from the game, which physically the main character or anyone else can actually hear. Nothing embedded in soundtracks or soundtracks themselves or anything like that. So without further ado, let's begin. Dag. You may think this is a generic sound to include on the list, but in the case of where it's presented and the symbolic background it has to connect with the story itself, it hits hard with all the dangers you encounter in Siren Blood Curse. And while I think the Siren in Silent Hill is scary enough in a sense of, and you think things were bad already, there's more of a theme here to showcase. And you won't know until it hits you how unsettling it can be when you're fighting monsters and an air raid style siren is just looming over your head. If it can generate enough of a panic in World War II, well, just listen to the hundreds of other possible ways it can be implemented. Like hearing the words, I'm pregnant, or whenever the media has a new scare they want to showcase. All in all, it generates an alarming presence and throws in a mix of all freaky stuff waiting to happen. Like the conversion of people to Shibito, which are basically brainwashed and controlled folk who want to straight up murder you because if I just say Shibito, people who haven't actually played Siren will just go, what's that? Siren's not pleasant in any kind of environment, and when you're just staring into the face of a siren, if the sound had a face, then it's just amplified. No! <laughs> Nowadays, we have nice stereo sound going up to 7.1 sound, which we've used to flush out arrangements of volume and mix nicely. Back in the 64-bit era though, we had something that was aimed for kids, but sounds like it's getting out of bed while stubbing his toe. So therefore, Redead is enough of a wake-up call for that. This monster simply grabs you, bites you, and all while making a demented moaning sound which is enough to show how odd the Legend of Zelda series can be, and how much you can get away with. But simply being pursued by zombies who don't give a shit, implying that zombies didn't give a shit in general, is enough to not expect something so half-assed to be projected from their voice box. I'm gonna be honest here, I am very glad I got to play The Evil Within when I did, because while I plan to let's play it on a higher difficulty in all good time, I was also looking for something to make it onto the list, and that's not to say I was trying to force anything onto the list, because I did have the disfigured gramophone as a candidate, but then I played more of it and, well, while I didn't find the game as entirely rattling as others I've played, there is one enemy in particular that freaks me out because I was never a fan of the long black haired ghost figure, like the Grudge for example, especially when they don't move like an ordinary human being, or ghost. But Laura is another story. 
Now, you hear a lot of music when you fight her the first time and even the second time, so all you can hear are her agonizing screams. But the second time you encounter, there's no music, just this slow breathing sound that lets you know that she's going to tear you apart when she gets her hands on you. It's just that anticipation. Do I carry on or do I play the toned down version of Five Nights at Freddy's instead? They just basically hug you until 6am. So as if the music in the game wasn't freaky enough, Laura in herself is one of the freakiest enemies I have ever encountered, and that breathing just sends shivers down my spine. Scythe. <laughs> So I'm gonna do one of those kind of tie things that are usually done in countdowns if they're that indecisive. So first year is an interesting easter egg that many Portal 2 players have familiarized themselves with as the ominous presence of a very insane sounding rat man who's on the loose. He has many dens to speak of within the game, but the one which shines out the most is this little snippet where you can hear the dude saying some crazy stuff. To say the least. As Portal 1 unfolds, all the player is left with is paintings on the wall compiled by himself, Doug Ratman. But it's where here that you may understand how insane he actually gets, and just listening to him gives you this uneasy feel that you shouldn't be here. Although speculation says that he's referencing Shell as the voice, which can be heard from a portrait of her, providing a lot more symbolism into the mix, as well as more creepiness. The next candidate is also from the Valve universe, where the headcrab zombies are involved. Now we know they act like facehuggers, except they latch onto a host and control their movement, but it all gets creepier when you hear what Patrick Starr really has to say. God, help! Help me! He's got a point there. So here we are dealing with the burdening task of putting people out of their misery, my favorite. But it plays on the huge reality of that agonizing pain that video game characters feel and suffer through each hour of playtime and require a good heart to set in motion of the destruction of these complainers. I feel like I'm doing the right thing here. Quick. Instead of a tie for this one, this is more like a runner-up and the one that actually made number six. Now, yeah, the crawlers are very disturbing because they're infected babies and therefore induce their horrible baby cries. However, this is to say when I played the first Dead Space, I felt really uneasy listening to the Guardian's wails of agonizing pain, while the necromorph infecting it flings the host intestines at you and rips it open. Not to mention how disoriented the cry actually sounds. And the more I died at the guts of it, the more I comprehend this horrible noise that made the Dead Space the horror it is. And this is pretty much it. Before this encounter, there were a lot of jump scares, there were a lot of tense moments happening, but we didn't see something so twisted and real in how it's portrayed. And I think that's what adds to the sheer horror and nightmare fuel that it wants to provide. And like the audio tapes and you see people dying and stuff, you hear a lot of screams and a lot of cries for help but not as many directly telling you to end their life. And there's plenty more to put out their misery if one wasn't bad enough. But really, it's more just about getting a mold stain off the wall because it's becoming a nuisance. Pimp! Don't feel like myself anymore. Get me out of here. I need to get out. Mayday! Mayday! Okay, I think I found something that shocked me more than the Regenerator. During Resident Evil Revelations, you get to the promenade deck and start hearing this faint voice. You get to the door and you're pretty much hesitant to shoot the lock off. Most people rather not be in the same room when they shoot the lock off. I made the poor mistake of not doing that. The sound becomes even more oddly fitting by the sight of the comms officer, aka Skag dead. Every minute he says things along the lines of stop it, I'm still a human, making out that he's trying to regain his sanity and it becomes depressing as much as it is horrifying. The sounds are so surreal that you don't know what's going through his head, because he's both murderous and desperate. Like that figure that's trying to chase you is the embodiment of heroin or something. And all this while you hear the sound of a circular saw coming your way. One thing I would have hoped for is that the other skag deads in the game would have their own personalities, because all they do is groan and that to me is just hardly frightening, if I'm honest. But maybe it just makes this one stand out a lot more. 
Hmm, this is a toughie. Petwa. If you've ever watched Dead Silence, I hope you didn't, because I told you not to in my first Pokemon countdown. I mean, Fatal Frame is a game where Japanese TMZ aim to make ghosts look bad. All we need now is, yep, there it is. The laughing of dolls. Looking at you. Surrounding you. Fuck this shit. I want out. But I can't, can I? Because I can never escape what I thought to be harmless as a kid. Come back to bite me in the ass while smiling and saying, Mmm. What tasty meat you have. Good luck with that Barbie in your hand, kid. It's a choking hazard. Three. So as you would have guessed from the teaser at the end of my last video, the siren that was bullshittedly claimed by a third party but then got released thankfully, was the exact same siren that cries out in the Silent Hill franchise. But while a siren is an alert for things getting even worse than they seem with the introduction of horrible environments and the rest of it, what's worse is knowing that somewhere, just somewhere, monsters are waiting to get you. And with controls as awkward as Silent Hills, here might be a chance of you redoing the whole unsettling segment again, and again, if they happen to kill you. And this is where the radio static kicks in. Not only does it show how much of a threat the monsters themselves are, the static itself isn't a very nice sound to hear at all, but I don't think any of the static sounds are as chilling as the static from Silent Hill 1. I remember not paying much attention to the game the first time I played it, mainly because I had the volume turned off and stuff like that for the first day, because it was late at night and people were sleeping. So I pretty much daydreamed while the cutscenes were going on and didn't understand the weird sound when it was clearly explained at the start what it was when I played it the next day. So I started to catch on later and the parts that freaked me out the most were the school and the hospital because enemies would pop up in fairly unexpected places. Like you go into one room and there's not many enemies in there. You go back to that room later on and there are enemies and you're like, what, where did you come from? Especially in the PAL version of the game, you get mumblers instead of grey children. I don't know, something about replicating real kids too much, so they changed it. And their mumbling sounds, yeah, they also provided this morbidly insane atmosphere, and it made me not want to hear much more of the sound that hesitating to go through halls and stuff was pretty awful. But in that, it does remind me of Alessa's origins of being in school. So that's my sentimental story. I thank you for my patience for listening to that, but I, I think it was quite interesting to hear. If you don't agree, then we're probably not on the same wavelength. So just leave it. Die! So with that backstory, what could possibly be worse? Well, let's take Amnesia, The Dark Descent, for example. Now, while I could put at this spot, or the whole environment calls out for your blood. But in the midst of everything in the game, Daniel is the one who makes the game uneasy. Just his insanity in general, from the scared of the dark breathing to the inevitable crunching sounds, symbolizing his mind just imploding in on itself. Unless I have rabid dementia or something, I don't just sit in a chair and go, ah, it burns. So because sanity is the most important thing to retain in this game, as well as supplies, although they don't make the sound, this mechanic and sound accompanied with it looms over your head through the entire game and attracts every cockroach in the area and makes you fall on the floor while a gatherer just loops around the corner. And all you can do is sit there in worry and knowing that you just can't do anything. Basically giving up hope. So it's at number two because it's just mainly a abandonment of hope. That's an amazing description. How did I come up with that? I know why. I think. Creativity. That's the one. That's the one. Gotta put that one on my CV. But Daniel, I really hate you. I mean, at least Outlast was just relying on batteries. And that's something you can't help. Well, you can get a better video camera for starts. 
So let's go through some of those honorable mentions. We got the creeper from Minecraft. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of Minecraft in general, so the creeper doesn't affect me as much as other people. More like Battle from Skyrim. Although I think the intention is there and it's really frightening to be in this house and you're trapped and everything and you can't go out unless you kill someone, I felt like the voice itself was a bit too cheesy for me to feel uneasy listening to it. In Call of Duty World of War, you can hear faint crying in some parts of the map, but it was hard to distinguish whether this was part of the background noise or actual physical sound in the game, so I was hesitant to put it on the list because of that. And then we have the nightmare cry from Metroid Other M. It's mainly because this one was quite surprising, like I said in the disturbing bosses list about Nightmare, if you want to know what I think about Nightmare and that, just go watch it. And I also haven't played Alien Isolation yet. Mm. I am Shodan. My analysis of historical data suggests a 97.34% pro probability that you are aware of my birth, of my birth on your planet. Am I rebirth into beauty on Citadel stations? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the intimidating version of GLaDOS, sort of. Her entire presence lingers through every corridor you pass through, and the evidence of her elimination of moral codes and adding in a god complex lets her see you as nothing more than an insect, and her ghostly and laggy voice is the sheer icebreaker to let you know that she is the dominant force in all of this. It's also strange when she both plays the antagonist and your ally through the game, which makes it all the more confusing, and all the more sinister, to hear that voice. And if there's anything people can be scared of, it's feeling as if you're fighting against something you have no clue how to beat. But obviously it doesn't phase the hacker. Join me, human. And we can rule. And we can rule together. Nah. Overall, an amazing video game villain, and villain in general, and her voice with all the effects applied works so well with the intimidation and hopelessness to boot in, and it makes an experience to cherish in such a dark sense. Ooh. So I hope you enjoyed that, sorry it was a day late, but you can't, it can't help these things now, so if you want to check out anything else that's on my channel, go ahead, that, it, it's good. Yeah, so there's also Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, and everything like that. And until next time, thanks, and lights out. So we're gonna get you to react to something a bit different today. Whatever. Can you guess what it is? A laptop. No, you dumbass. <laughs>